Welcome to Time Bold Office Hours on September 7, 2023. You are live with Doug, Doug and Quinston. Once again, we are here to answer your questions, check your workflows, and generally just make sure that you get the most out of Time Bold. It does look like we've got some people piling in right now. Let me go ahead and get these guys admitted. Hello. Welcome to Time Bold Office Hours. I know that, uh, Robin, you were first on the line. Hello. Hi. Hey, Robin. Are you here for a specific question? Is there something we can help you out with? Yes. My first question is, I was doing this multicam for the very first time. There were two cameras. One was recording me and one was recording the B-roll. One camera, my camera number one was recording at 29 frames and the B-roll camera was recording on 24 frames. When I imported the footage in Time Bold, usually the moment you click on FCPX, uh, ML. I did not get that pop-up of uh, where you set up your frame rate. I had shared that screen recording okay. with, uh, with a concerned person and somehow I couldn't get that. And that is why when I take that footage inside uh, Final Cut Pro, uh, it was kind of out of sync. I remember you, I remember you, Robin. Thank you very much for sending that video in. It was it was very helpful. And as Robin was saying, Quinston, in his video, uh, do, are you able to share your screen? In his video, as he goes into, here, let me allow this in his video as he goes in to do the multicam sequence with final cut pro when he clicked that button when I, we usually get the pop-up that says input your frame rate there was no way to do that so if it's a video it doesn't show up as a you can't set a custom frame rate you can only set a custom frame rate if there is an audio file if it's an mp3 because mp3s don't have frame rates, right so uh one way to fix this issue is by using the fcp xml multicam uh or you can do two xml files and then combine them later in final cut pro so you're saying there's a sync issue can you uh, um, show me because uh, there shouldn't uh, be a sync issue. Uh, I did choose that option of FCM, okay. uh, FCML uh, multicam only. I didn't choose the normal option. Okay. And after that, only I did not get that. I uploaded a file. Uh, is it possible for you to share that video or just play that video that he gets an idea? If you just quickly see that I have uploaded the file, uh, I have uploaded a file, clicked on multicam, uh, this thing, and then it Correct. did not give me that issue. Uh, it did not give me that pop-up. I'll have to search. Or do you want me to share the screen? I'll just quickly Yeah, that would be perfect, actually. If you can just show us like what's happening. Yeah. That's time bold. Can you see time bold? Okay, uh, let me just drop the file here. That's the file. If you see all the settings and stuff uh, and i was clicking on this option fc xml multicam so once i click Correct. that it just gives me where the when you have a video file it doesn't let you select the custom frame rate because it takes the frame rate that the file already has and makes an xml file based on that file there is a situation where it lets you select a custom frame rate and that situation only occurs when you have an mp3 file or a wav file because mp3 files and wav files don't have frame rates because it's not a video right it's a it has sam sampling rates fcp xml file to generate an FCP XML file with an audio, you need a frame rate. That's why Time will ask for a frame rate when you have an MP3 or a WAV file. But if the video file exists, the video's frame rate is taken and then an FCP XML is created. Let's just see what the issue is because you, you won't be able to set a custom frame rate export from Final Cut Pro. It'll just take the file and what the frame rate the file has and then make an FCP XML for that file. Another issue is I'm in Final Cut Pro. This is a fresh new library. I import that XML, upload that. That's the file. Perfect. I import that. That's the file here. Okay, now if I go in the very first file here, okay, this is my primary angle. I say add angle and I just type here B roll. And if I drag the another file, which is uh, which is my B roll file, and I drag that file here, let me just mute the audio that you guys don't get. Oh, sorry, sure. you can't mute. But if you say they both are, uh, one is a total close up. If I. You need to sync them together, right? Yes, I need to sync them. So, what yeah. I, the video which I saw as reference is like in the B roll, you just click that. All you have to do is just click on the B roll and say sync to the monitoring angle. Am I right? Correct. 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 Right? Or is it to sync to monitoring angle? Which one? Uh, out sync of... the, the first one. The first one. Sync to monitoring angle. Correct. I've done that. So, I. And then. Oh, it click... doesn't sync? No, it does not sync. It stays where I have physically put the file. The audio on the files, is it the same audio? Like do this, both the files have the same audio track or is it like uh, a different audio track? My primary file the uh, has an inbuilt audio, which was coming through my Zoom. Right. And the right. second file has a road video mic audio. So I'm just saying that uh, was the, is the audio similar in both or is it a different audio? Yes, yes, yes. It is, it's similar, it is. right? So this is not a time bold issue. This is a Final Cut Pro issue. The issue you're facing is that right. it's not able to sync Sync the files. This is the Final Cut Pro issue. Time Bolt has nothing to do with this. Um, Time Bolt gave you the cuts. So now in Final Cut Pro, I'm not an expert in Final Cut Pro, but might, might, might be able to help you. But the issue right now is how do you sync these files in Final Cut Pro? Have the same starting point. How to do this? I, I'm not, like I use Premiere Pro. Um, that's typically just a sync 
option. Hold on one second. Let me look at something. Okay. Can, can you zoom out and just pull pull the file to the short um, in the multi cam clip? You can double the double click inside the multi cam clip. So now, if you see, because the second camera was started a little bit later, what, what I realized was that for the first few seconds, it syncs pretty well, and then it kind of goes out of sync. I was trying to figure that out. I think what the, what we're showing what we're showing here in our instructions is is do the sync to the uh, monitoring the second the, the second option. I'm trying to okay the second option. Yeah. So, uh, let me just delete it again and let me drag the second file. We can think, see the yeah the sync selection to monitoring angle. So I put the <laughs> second B roll and I click on the second one sync selection to oh, monitor. Yeah. So now if you see the the below B roll has kind of adjusted. Uh, what what the problem is that once I go back and I switch it on now because this is in Hindi and I'm sure you guys don't understand that I I understand Hindi I live in Bang Bangalore <laughs> it's off by like a, a second or half of a second that's <laughs> how uh, it is and I was well, trying to well this is what, what I think you, you explain the 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 problem is that one of your frames is what twenty five and the other is twenty four or something like that. There's a yeah. disparity. One is twenty nine and one is twenty five. And let's so, just see. Uh, I I think let's just. Uh, what second does it go off sync from? Can I just play and? Uh, yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. sure. Hi, friends. Finally, we are in my studio, in which we will test the Gorosca M1, M2, and Sony's SRX system. Okay. Now. Hi, friends. Finally. Yeah. See. See. So, first, what <laughs> was fine. Till here, no. All this is uh, whatever this this four cuts which you see in between are my retakes. So probably the out of sync happened in that the very first cut. Like all this, the, the first four five cuts are dead silent. I can just delete them. Uh, the video starts from here. So the first take is good. After that, these four cuts which are there, that's where some out of sync happens because in the first one, it's perfect. The voice is matching to my actions on uh, what is the B-roll camera. But then these ones are where it kind of goes. And if you hear, if you can, hear, can you here, yeah, can you go to the middle of the video? Like, can you? And see if it drifts more than is the is the out of sync constant or is it it goes more out of sync as progressively the video progresses? No, it's constant. It's just a frame which is off. That's that's a framerate issue probably because I have seen issues where what happens is that because the the video frames are different. So if it's I, constant, I, then I I think if it's constant, then you'll have to probably re 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 encode the file because yeah, I don't think that could be fixed because if it's drifting, then it'll it, it could be an issue with the end with the way the cuts are made. But if it's mm -hmm. constant, then I don't think that's fixable with the XML. Yeah. I have to actually check the entire video. I've not checked because I was editing the first. Yeah, that's why I said, can you go to the like the middle or the end part? You can see if the drift is like more at the end. Okay. Let me just play this part. I'm sure real life me don't need to go into it. No. Even here, drifting. It's not. It goes more. It's more out of sync with the the mm -hmm. the further you go in time. So that has to be a frame rate issue, right? Yeah, I would think it's a uh, probably um, is. Uh, I used to earlier use. Pluralize, if in premium also we use, but the company has stopped now, they don't make that software anymore. There, it was never an issue. It used to be an issue back in 2017 when Final Cut was the only one way it could, uh, we could sync multicam files. But again, uh, nowadays people shoot on various frame rates. Someone is shooting on 60, someone is. So it used, the Pluralize used to work really, really well. I assume now the company has shut. This is the first time I'm trying multicam with. Uh, yeah. Let me, hey, Quinston, if, if they didn't use Time Bolt and he just tried to sync the these without any Final Cut Pro multicam, could, would it work inside? Oh, we can try it. We can, it's can you like, create like a new project and just put the files together and see if they're like for a filling sync? Okay. I don't know if that's an issue, but we can. Because that try be, if, if, if that was the case, it's not something we can fix, right? Yeah. If, <laughs> I, Cause I'm at the end of this, hopefully we'll either be able to fix it or be able to create a rule that says, hey, look, if you're going to do multicam work inside Final Cut Pro. Oh. Sorry, I've never done that. Wait, let me just see how is that. I think just right click and synchronize is, I mean, that's what you're doing. I think that is, that is how it was earlier. <laughs> so from the existing file, you create a multicam file and then, oh yeah. <laughs> Time oh, we're just test, testing the files if the files are, you know. I just hit undo to undo all the, the compound clips that you just made and all that stuff. Or, okay, now go up, <laughs> select, uh, and then do the clip somehow that or maybe select one clip. Oh yeah, the first option, the second option is syn synchronized clip. See, there's a second option called syn synchronized yeah, clip. Yeah, I know, but it's that option not everything. Uh, select that second clip. 
and hit synchronized clips. That option is grayed out. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. But what you have to do is it's in the projects, not on the timeline. It's in the project. So wherever your files are imported, you have two files imported, right? So you need to go to that project section. The you top list, top to list, time, time uh, That is the name yeah. of the uh, library which I've made. So where are these two clips inside the media pool? So, uh, what happens is when we import files through time, time board, XML in FCP, it does not take the entire raw file. You don't have to import those files. Yeah, what I'm saying is import those files we, because yes. that, that, that won't happen just, with this. Yeah, you can do a multiply clip, true. Luik will be getting to you uh, right after this, okay? Okay, now sync the, let's do the same thing, like synchronize to monitor, sync, synchronize okay. selection to monitor. I think they're already synced, weren't they? Yeah, I think they're, now you don't have to do that because... Yeah, they're already synced. Let's just see if they're synced, play it. Yeah, let's just play them. <laughs> Transmitters में अब आता है micro SD की port जिसमें आप 8 GB से लेके 256 GB तक का card no I can, think can you click on the and try to select the second angle and then do the set to active like set uh, sync synchronized selection I I don't think it's synchronized yet okay sync uh, to monitor angle yeah. the sec second clip second the second one. clip second one. Is, to do... visually looks like it should be synced no if you see there's a difference between the hand movement uh, let me just play that only this portion again you will see the difference i put the hand now yeah yeah there's a, there's a difference there's a difference but when i put my hand on those so is this a file issue or a time bold issue you so haven't used time bold in this yeah no. we haven't used time bold but that means that this is something inside final cut pro that we can't fix yeah this this isn't our this isn't our issue we can't fix this i guess the the moral of the story here is you got to record at the same frame rate in fun. One thing I do have, I'm concerned about is, uh, is this va variable frame? It doesn't seem like variable frame rate, right? Constant frame rate. Yeah, it's constant frame rate. Both I, I do say, yeah, one, one thing that I think should be done is just to re-encode and see if you make them the same frame rate, then what happens? Technically speaking, uh, frame rates shouldn't matter when it comes to syncing files because... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's, what's going on. I know because we also do, um, I do a lot of wedding work and in that we have four cameras. We, we sync all four cameras together. But that happens in Premiere Pro and the people who are shooting at 100 frames, 24 frames, 60 frames, 120 frames. So it's pretty smooth in Premiere Pro. In Final Cut Pro, I've never done that. Uh, oh, I, I, I want to show you a new feature we're working on Premiere Pro. Uh, it's what you can do is you can export sequence and okay. then you can catch. Do you want me to show you or we should get to e Eok first? Let's let's get to uh, Eok first. And please please stay online, Robin. I, I, I want to show it to you. Okay, uh, let me just close my screen. Eok, how you doing? Hey, I remember you. I, I don't remember. He, he made a watchable. That's right. Hey, uh, I don't know if I can hear your audio. Oh, okay. sorry. My, we go. my headset was muted. <laughs> there we go. Explain to the class what's what uh what was what issues that you were having and it was had to do with exporting to resolve correct exporting to resolve you use the integration and then you're you're a heavy user of fast forward he uses the fast forward feature uh i didn't know that and, and no, I, fast forward doesn't uh, translate to extension that's that's something that's something that i learned he tried xml and I also, in your honor, in your name, I actually put Premiere and Resolve in our features thing, how you uh, bracketed it out, okay? What's going on now with your XML file? And if you could share your screen, that would be great uh, when you're talking about it. Uh, very simple. The XML worked for the fast forward. It actually set the speed to 400%, but the audio uh, is still playing. It plays with the... But the, the, it, it seems to do something because the, the fast forward audio clips are darkened, in theory, meaning their uh, volume has been touched. Uh, to, to zero but when it when it arrives um when it, it points i don't know why it, it, it points a, it, it imports a second audio track you have to reset the them so you have to reset them so what you can do is select all of the audio tracks zoom out and just select them all uh both both the tracks select both the tracks uh then you right click you got something selected up there up on there oh that's fine okay. yeah, just don't click on clip attributes the fourth yeah. option from the bottom and then you go into audio and then you can select your channels from here so i think uh i don't know if you have stereo audio the original file whatever your settings are for the original file you can drop it in here so maybe i think mono one or you can select embed channel one and then on the second option you can select embed channel two. Oh, okay yeah. i think and the it... first track is stereo like the sound is is centered but yeah. only the so you can select whichever is... you want in that yeah so okay, you so... can select mono for the uh, stereo for the first one and then it'll give you two more options and then mm -hmm. you can do one two and then you can select stereo or mo mono over there i i always go with stereo because the even if it's mono, it gets split. So if you select stereo on the second one, and then you can just do ah, channel okay. one on top, channel two on top. 
on the bottom. You can just select the second one. Yeah. Yeah. And the first, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the top one should be channel one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think this should work. Can you just press OK? Yeah, now it's in, uh, well, uh, I muted this trick. But I don't know if you have the audio from the, the stuff. Oh, we can't hear you because I don't think you have shared your sound. Yeah, you can just, you can confirm for us if it works. <laughs> but basically, I have only one track, so if I can just mute or delete the second one, I guess. Yeah, basically, these, uh, these audio uh, clips, they are darkened. In theory, it means the, the volume has been changed. If uh, you go into Time Vault, uh, there's an option for that. So when you fast forward, you can either select two mute or keep the sound so in time uh, bold, in time bold, there's a checkbox if you select a file in theory i, I keep it to mute but maybe maybe somehow it I, I don't suggest keeping to mute keep the sound because if you in the future if you want to just bring it back you can do that so you can uncheck this export it and it'll keep the sound well, well hold on just a second he he's saying that the mute button was clicked and that what's going on, what's wrong with what it's doing when the mute button is clicked inside Resolve? What is the delta? What's, what it's going to be zero. The sound is going to be zero. And you're not wanting that? No, he doesn't want that. He wants the sound. Uh, no, no. On the speed up clips, uh, no, uh, I, I, no it, 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 it plays like very fast sound. So, so you don't want the sound? Correct. No, no. And he's saying when he hits the mute button, there's something going on, right? So the mute was clicked. And what yeah. what's going on? Can you zoom in? I don't I don't understand how to like see into it looks like just a I, I don't is there a way to look at the audio wave? Uh, can you mm -hmm. click on this but this clip is green over there? Oh uh, yeah, the so big one. The big clip with the zero audio. This one. Can you right right click on that and go to clip attribute? Yeah, this this one, there's something wrong with this. Because this shouldn't be this should be not normal green color, not dark green. Yeah, uh, I, I just uh, I just did manually uh here to show that when you touch the volume, it turns the, the clip to dark gray. And okay. all the sped up clips, they, they are dark gray, but the volume is at, at zero, like all the other clips. Something that det detected that the volume should be changed, but it didn't change change it, I mm. guess. I, I'll, I'll test it out. Uh, have you sent the file to Doug? Uh, like the resolve file or? Uh, the MP4, the source MP4, or whatever source video file you're using. Uh, no, I, I can send a link. So if you can send a link, we'll test it. Because uh, one thing I do notice is that some clips are not, uh, they aren't like the proper green color, even though they're not the fast forward clips. Because the one that was at the start, it wasn't a fast forward clip, but it was still a different shade of green. I'll test, test it out. Let, let me see if there's a genuine issue with the file itself. No, I think this is correct. All the 400% are have the audio dark so I, I think that there is no like the only strange thing is that the audio the yeah, the audio is dark but the volume is okay and if it's zero it should it should yeah yeah basically it detected that the volume should be changed but it didn't change it really like it changed so, it to exactly the same zero correct with the extension the only thing you need with the extension is for fast forwards right yeah with, with the the json file uh, yeah it doesn't yeah, it doesn't speed doesn't up. do fast forward yeah. that's a limitation it has true so if if that's uh added to that extension uh, to that extension you would want to use the extension then xml yeah i guess it's faster the extension yeah, it's faster yeah, it's simpler yeah okay we'll that's all that's on the agenda we are trying to get that in there so we'll just shoot you an email once that's available so fast forward you, you were looking to do fast forward in the extension and yeah. is there a way is there a way that we could test this with right now like hey if i hit the mute button and i import just a regular file like one of your files in there is it going to look like what this does oh i i can do it on my machine yeah. Could we do that? Could you check that real quick? Yeah, I can, I, can, I can check that. That way we can see if we need his file, the test, or... Yeah, of... yeah, we need his file for if there's a genuine... I don't know if there's an issue because he says it's correct. <laughs> I haven't seen the file myself, so I don't know. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I don't think there I mean, is... If, if he's happy, I'm happy. I record it with OBS. It's pretty standard. Uh... No, the files which are record with OBS, the only concern I have with them is that usually they are like variable frame rate, and that messes up quite a lot of stuff, uh, like Zoom recordings. So that's usually my concern when it comes to uh, OBS. OBS recordings. Yeah, I, I think it's fine. I, I don't think there's any prevalent issue. I just tested it. Fast forwards, which are already on. Maybe I fast forward this clip and I fast forward this clip and I export an XML again, just over here. And Can I you this again. mute the audio? Did you mute the audio? The XML, third clip. I import it. Uh, okay, looks good. It does change color. Uh, okay, It I changes color, it so... but the... Yeah, it works yeah. on your hand. I think you should send the clip just for like, just to make sure. Yeah, I can send them before and, and test. Yeah. Uh, I just tested whether right now, just like there's a discrepancy in one clip right now that you're going to test the the clips that we have that we're testing mute the audio properly inside. Yeah, yeah. Using XML. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll have to do we'll have to do a class one one day on this whole. I, I get quite a bit of of questions on Resolve audio tracks, how they all line up. Maybe just getting like some complicated. We have a blog on that, right? And I think we do have a blog on that. Yeah. We... Do I think check that out? Uh, okay, I'll I'll. I'll... I'll link you to it later. The, the thing that I wanted to show uh, Robin about the Premiere Pro thing is what 
what I've figured out is that the, one of the ways to do multicam in Timebolt with a uh, Premiere Pro now that we are working on is by using an XML sequence. So this is the same file, right? This is a file that Doug has sent me. And this file is actually one of four files. Each of these four files are recorded like with multiple cameras with four different cam cam cameras. The current way in which multicam is, is done in Timebolt with Premiere Pro is by using the extension. So the Timebolt extension is what we use to like sync files together and then make those cuts. So we are coming up with a, another way, another option for use, users to try out. And that is with se sequences. This is, these are the cuts for this file. This is file number one, master audio. Okay. And there's a new button, which is going to come out. It's called XML sequence. Click on this button. It gives you another file, an XML file. You drop it into Premiere Pro. And if you see, there are three clips. Usually when you import XML, there are just two clips. Now there are three. So when you click on this one, you can see that it's a sequence. So it's not a, it's, it's not a regular clip. It's a sequence. When you go inside, it's actually a clip inside a clip. Hmm. So. Now what I can do is I can take these other three cameras, these three angles, I can drop it in, and then I can sync it to the sequence inside the sequence. And then I can right click, and then there's a synchronize option. I come back over here. And now the main, the main sequence remains the same. I go inside, okay. Go, go inside and there are like multiple clips inside the sequence. So let's say you want to use the second camera angle. Uh, if I bring it here, let's say I'm, I'm on this. This is the first camera angle. I turn this off. Now I come, now it's the second camera angle. You can do the edits inside here of which camera angles you want to keep and not keep. So I can delete this, delete. We delete these two. And now those edits will show up in the main sequence. So instead of having to use the extension, you can just do this. And then whenever you want to make a change, you can go inside or you can just make the edits here. So this is much faster. It's instant, essentially. So when you click the button, it's instant. It just... Now, let me ask you a question about that, Quentin. In Final Cut Pro, the, the how, we, how we pulled this off in Final Cut Pro, there's actually... They actually have the ability as you're watching the sequence to change cameras. And I remember the guys asking, hey, look, you don't really have a multi uh, solution. You have a multi. My question would be is how does a sequence relate to a multi cam? You can convert this into multi cam by uh there there is a way i, I don't exactly know because uh we're going to use a different uh sequence a different output for that but in premiere pro there is a way to do this is by uh like deleting these parts and then creating a multi-cam like this there's an option to create a multi-cam camera source and then you can select which track you want camera one any more tracks okay and this creates a different type of project if you see the icon is different but it's not a clickable thing so what happens is that in this i'm playing this right now if i i don't think you can hear the sound right yeah let me just do that again in here i can select the camera angles this is what like true multicam is in premiere pro like you have your monitor and you have four different camera angles and then you can select which one you want i am trying to integrate this too so then it will be like a but that that would be a different option so you can convert the existing solution which is composed of sequences so this solution is mainly composed of sequences Where did I export that? So this solution is mainly composed of sequences it's not composed of a multi-cam but the point is that you can use you can add multiple files to it and it becomes a multi-file solution instead of using the extension you can use this so multi the thing is that it's just it's just semantics multi-cam is semantically a feature that premiere pro has but technically it's still multi-file like that's that's why in, in time world we call everything multi-file instead of multi-cam because people get really anal about you know, multi-cam or multi-cam is a feature i guess um, i guess my question would be is, is if i create the sequence and i have multiple camera angles in there What's the advantage of, like, I have to go back and forth between a sequence and internal each and every camera change to make that change? Why, what's the advantage of that? Uh, like for DJ Monopoly, the one that uh, the guy who actually requested this, he doesn't have that issue. Because he, doesn't, he just wants to sync multiple files. He doesn't want to go between multiple files. For him, the use case is, okay, I have like a three hour long file. I don't want to use the extension because it's, it takes too long. I want it to be instant, but I want to add like custom effects to my, or, 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 or my original files. Let's say you want to, you, you have this file, right? And you want to add like maybe a vignette if, if, if effect, or you want to add some sort of transition effect at the start, or you, you want to do something where you don't change the time inside the clip, but you want to add on top of it without having to alter the, the one where the cuts are made. Okay. Okay. This, this option, right? here it works best still with a single audio and video no 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 no. it's for everything see the multi-cam thing is just semantics it's that's what i'm trying to explain yeah. multi-cam is a feature yes. but multi but you can do multi-file with like multi-file is a process so you can i can take like three different files like I, I, as i said i can take all of these camera angles drop it in sure you won't be able to click one and two and change the camera angle but you can do it like you it, would it okay mike mike is it would it be easier for me if i if i had a multi-cam setup like this right here and that's 40 minutes long like is it easier for me to change between camera angles 
in this view right here. Now you're going back and forth between two different, like a sequence and it's it's a it's a multi-file so solution. If multi-file solution, I I wouldn't say it's multi-cam, obviously. But, but when you say okay, so multi-file would mean multi-file with multi-file audio or like is it like a multi -file? yeah multi-file audio multiple cameras whatever no no i was saying that final cut pro is much easier simpler more faster i use on m1 and m2 machines and because we shoot everything 4k if you try to edit a multi-cam on a slower machine especially uh, i'm sure you will also agree to this if, if you if you edit that on a mac on a final cut pro it's much more faster yeah as true with premiere pro same machines same file sizes it, it just obvious look at this if I have a multi-cam, right, let's, I'll just show you. I have a 4090 on this machine, okay, a 4090 with 32 gigs of RAM, i7, 13 gen. If I do this, if I literally do, do this, it still doesn't work properly. I select this, this multi-cam thing, I, I I don't know if it's really that good anyway. So if I click on this, okay, top of the line hardware, it doesn't even show up. Too long to just show up. And if, if I do the same thing on a FCP, it, it just goes. The Without Time Bolt, what you're saying is, is that the multi-cam inside Premiere is very difficult. It's yeah, not, I, I, I wouldn't say it's the best. <laughs> I don't want to like, <laughs> say anything well, Doug, I, is good yeah Doug I wanted to tell you that that uh, now there it is. You, you, you're physically in front of me so thank you very much because uh, I started I've been doing a uh, wedding for last 12 years and stuff started the social content online content creation journey eight months back wanted to do it from last one year or one and a half years but I think the day I purchased time bold which is probably eight months or nine months it has changed my life I post every morning. Uh, in the last eight months, I've grown to 100,000K followers. And now nice. I'm doing brand promotions for a lot of companies. So I think it's only possible because now I could cut fast, edit fast. I could do a lot of uh, uh, video edits. It's all because of uh, time balls. Thank you very much. You guys that's, made a fine product. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Rob, hey, Robin, I, I want to I help. I want to help Quincy. Can I just uh, help Robin real quick with 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 a couple things? Can you please share your screen? I'm, we're going to help you out even more here. Okay, uh, share your screen with Time Bold in it. Okay, now what I want you to do is once once this runs, I want I want to show you the before and after on this. Okay, uh, scroll down. I go to the settings. See see how there's you, you got noise and there's a bunch of stuff. See how the cuts are right now. I want you to go to settings. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Now I want you to because you're a, when the current ones come selected, but select automatically detect desktop filter and yes select that hit done uh restart app no you don't need yeah, to, re to restart it yeah. yeah restart the app just because uh now just throw that same file back in now look at it now your cuts are far more precise that's actually the math got perfect in time bolt but now you want to automatically detect decibel level and values when before that wasn't the case now it it really did you see your timeline you see how much closer your cuts are okay that just i, I swear it'll you, when you play this you'll be like oh wow Holy crap, this changed everything. So you've got that. Do not edit anything in another edit. Like there's no point in editing your timeline inside which one, Premiere or a, another, Uncut. okay? Just remember three keys, okay? Okay, SOB, all right? In the United States, that's an acronym for son of a bitch, okay? SOB, <laughs> that's easy for us to remember. That's not what it means though. S splits the timeline, click, like you should be removing and at, you shouldn't be cutting any time out of this timeline when you get inside Premiere. So as you're, as you're going through, the first thing you wanna do is, is, is scroll up, scroll up, hit preview playback at 1.5X, I'm going to take you through this super fast, okay? 1.5x preview, scroll up. Yeah, right there, 1.5x. Now, click inside the timeline. Click in, no, no, don't worry. Don't ever use a button again. No more buttons, okay? No buttons. <laughs> click inside the timeline, okay? Hit hit uh, space bar. I've done that. Nothing is moving. Oh, this isn't play. It's one of those files. Well, this is, that's the problem. That, that, that's got, it's got to be variable frame rate. Oh, it doesn't. Apply. It's one of those files. One of those files. This it, is actually it, a 10-bit, pretty heavy file. It's a pretty bit. heavy file. It's probably, it's probably not going to play. I have also shot 12-bit because I'm testing Nikon's new camera, and that uh, produces 12-bit internal RAW, and we have tested that with Time Bolt also. Though I've never played, I never played here. I always import it in Final Cut Pro and then play there. So it works. It it does its magic. It cuts and all that stuff happens. So I don't I don't I don't work with files that don't play inside Time Bolt, but your cuts just got far more accurate. Okay. So that's going to help you a lot. So because I remember if I go down here, the filter below sound level in DB. I guess it was earlier around about forty something. It was thirty five. 
to start minus 30, 35 and now because we checked that option it has come to minus 22 right yes. so it adjusts according to your file oh nice it yeah. tries so to this, find the best the bestest so one this i have to do for every time i uh import a no file it, it, it's set now it's set you just have to drop set. the file it'll automatically detect which is the best one to use and then also if you end up making just like random videos don't forget we've got a capture option okay see that little capture thing right there the, on the left hand side camera right. icon on the left hand side on the, on the left and the little icon see that little camera thing no left uh, left. left left go up the blue camera icon you can record your screen okay if you've got to give a if, if you need to make another support ticket or you're just wanting to communicate you can record your screen save it as a small file and then you can actually send a watchable from with inside time bolt if you scroll down after your file after you're done recording it'll auto kick in the time bolt and then see see that little icon that, next to add to render queue it has an up icon button. That's going to change. It's going to look like a different icon, but that is, you'll be able to take your video and push it to a public, uh, it's a public link, but it's a private link. You're not, it's not like it's searchable somewhere. Okay. So now you can either send a link or, uh, when you record at a, it'll record at a small bit rate. It won't be 400 gigs of, of a video. <laughs> it'll be like four megabits. Okay. Because I can see that and I don't need 400 gigs. Uh, you'll be able to upload that to a private, uh, link and be able to send that out or have a small file size you can upload to Slack or stick in the body of an email or anything, something like that. Loom, but watchable. I, I, I understand you, you You don't have a file that plays in Time Bolt with yeah, your 12. <laughs> with your 12. That's a 10, 10 bit file. I don't think it will play in Time Bolt ever. Like, I, I, don't I just know don't know what think it <laughs> When you said 10 bit, everybody just got quiet and I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, like, oh, that's mean. not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point of like, is that for YouTube algorithms or something? Well, that's a very high quality well, file, man. Color. That, it's the color thing. Wow. I'm also a Nikon mentor. I've got some new cameras, which Nikon cameras are the only one which does 12 bit and ProRes internally. I'm just testing now. Like, why shoot the normal way? Let's shoot whatever the crazy, uh, whatever the max. <laughs> that makes sense. If you want to get faster, though, with your workflows, you're starting to pump out more content. If you end up doing just like a regular file size 4K or something like that, you can edit much faster inside Time Bolt and cut out your timeline with SOB. S splits the timeline, O turns the current scene off and skips to the next scene. And B cuts the previous, the back cuts the previous scenes. If you're like, oh, I just listened, I just repeated myself. You hit B, you don't even have to stop the playhead and it just cuts back. Yeah, but that stuff can be done anywhere. You don't have to play it for that. Like you yeah. can do B without playing the file. You can just click on it and press B. You don't need to play it for pressing the B key. Okay. Well, yeah, no, that makes sense. All right. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, uh, uh, TJ, anything we can help you out with? And I know we got Quentin for another five minutes. Oh, I'm good on my end. I was just here uh, supporting you guys. Awesome. Appreciate, awesome. appreciate you showing up. Robin, are we are we good to go? Is there... uh, yes. Just one thing. I might even make a reel on my workflow and tell my entire audience because I normally cater to photographers, cinematographers, content creators, that how my work has changed. In case if you have a code of with some, some, something like that, which people can go get some affiliate link, uh, do I, I'll probably email that to you later on. Yeah, you can and... contact Doug for that. We have like a bunch of affiliates. Here, let, me, let me just put... Let me just put uh, the link to the affiliate zone. What you would do is uh, just sign up here at the affiliate zone and you'd be able to, you'd be able to sign up. I can get you a, a, a code for viewers. And once you do that, I'd be happy to do that. It, it might, it, it might, it'd be great to see your workflow. It'll also be cool if you maybe just try it with a normal file and try the keys SOB just to kind of <laughs> show that like time bolt's just not like a plugin. Like, you can actually do things in it. Uh, I've just never seen that where a file doesn't play because of the- It's a 10 bit color space. And that's the problem. Yeah. Color space. It sounds space agent, space level. <laughs> so much for showing up here. And that does it for time bolt office hours. Please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and of course, hit the notification bell if you care when we go live and I'm out of time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.